Do you ever wonder how did the financial aid office come up with how much money you owe them, even though you have scholarships and it's seeming not to add up right? Well, today I want to take you all through how the financial aid office processes your money and comes up with your need how much it is that you owe them um, after applying grants and scholarships and all the things. So let's get right to it. Okay guys, so what I wanna do is walk you through everything and also do a demonstration, um, kind of like a breakdown of everything. And if you hear any you know, background noise, I live in the city area, so that's why. So your financial aid office comes up with what's called the cost of attendance. The cost of attendance is ideally supposed to include all the things that you need for school, transportation, housing, um, things like that. So they calculate your cost of attendance based on a few things. For one, everybody's school is different. So if you go to a private institution, or a public institution, your cost of attendance is gonna be different. It's also gonna be a bit different if you went to school in state versus going to school out of state. If you go to school in state and you go to a public institution, that's probably about the best deal you can get for four-year institutions. If you decide to go to a public school out of state, then you're gonna be paying pretty much the same fees as if you were going to a private institution. So schools use this cost of attendance to determine what your fees are going to be. They determine if you're gonna get in-state tuition versus out-of-state tuition. They determine if you're gonna have on-campus housing, how much is that gonna cost? Versus if you're gonna be on off-campus, how much should that cost? Now, these numbers for off-campus housing definitely does not add up most of the time. Generally, it's gonna end up costing you, you know, different from what the school budgets because you have to also consider electric bill, water bill, cable bill, Wi-Fi bills. You have extra expenses, food bills, gas bills, right? and it's not necessarily considered totally by the university. A quick insider tip is that you can call the university and tell them that you need a raise in cost of attendance for housing, and sometimes they do it, sometimes they don't. But it'll all be based on what the school thinks is appropriate for your living costs. So I'm gonna take my handy dandy iPad here Okay, so let's say you choose your school. It could be any school, in, in state or out of state. But we're gonna just, you know, throw the numbers out there. They still crunch down the same way. It's just that some numbers are more realistic than others. But let's just go for, you know, some projected numbers. So let's just say your cost of attendance is going to be $50,000. Now, that doesn't mean that you necessarily owe the school $50,000. It just means that that's how much they expect everything to cost you, including transportation, um, books, clothes that you'll need, things like that. So it's not necessarily things that you owe to the school, but how much they expect it will cost you to stay at the school for a year. So you have your cost of attendance. Now, the first thing that you are probably gonna do is fill out your FAFSA. And with your FAFSA, they're gonna say um, that you um, can get a set amount of federal aid. You're probably going to fill out your FAFSA and when you fill that out, they're basically calculating how much aid you should get from the government. Now, the aid is gonna be based off of your tax records from two years ago. When you fill out your FAFSA, they're going to say that you have a certain amount that you can get for loans and a certain amount you can get for Pell Grant if you are Pell Grant eligible. Let's say that the government offers you $20,000 worth of loan, okay? And they also offer you for Pell Grant, 
$5,000, okay? $5,000. What the, what the financial aid office does is they take this $25,000 that you are eligible for in federal aid and they subtract it from your $50,000. So now you have $25,000 in offered aid and you still have left over $25,000 in unmet need. Now, if we stop right here and you don't get any extra funding because you didn't apply to scholarships or because you weren't eligible for scholarships or because you didn't get any scholarships or grants and or anything like that. So they're gonna say that your unmet need is $25,000. Now, they're not going to say, send me $25,000. That's just your unmet need. Remember what I said before, it includes things like transportation and things like that. Let's just say that out of that 25,000, the school is only gonna require you to send them 15,000. So what you'll have to do is pay the school $15,000. Um, and you don't have to pay the $10,000, but, you should expect that it will be going somewhere. So let's just say that uh, you only have to pay the school uh, $30,000. If you accept your loan amount of $20,000 and your Pell Grant of $5,000, that means that you will have to pay the school $5,000, right? Let's say you reject the loan, then that means that all you have on your account is Pell Grant then you'll have to pay the school $25,000. Now the rest of that money is just money that is an estimate for the cost of living. But let's say we were very proactive and we listened to Developing as Dr. K and parents and our teachers and everyone around us and decided to apply to all that free money out there, those scholarships. There are different kinds of scholarships, which I talk about in a video that is going to be released later this week. And I'll link it here in the cards and also in the description box about different definitions of different scholarships. Let's just um, make it simple for ourselves and say that we get a merit-based scholarship from our institution. Let's say from our merit-based scholarship, we get $10,000. So now our unmet need changes, right? Now our unmet need is now $15,000. Now let's say that we don't accept the loan, then what we have in our account is $15,000 from Pell Grant and from the Merit-Based Scholarship. Now if our institution is asking us to pay $30,000, then we owe them another $15,000. And our unmet need is going to still be $15,000. Now, let's say that we add on a need-based scholarship, which is, which is going to bring us $25,000. We have more offered aid than what we need. So what they do is they subtract this new scholarship, $25,000, and we see that we have a surplus of $10,000. How does the financial aid office handle this? Do they send you a refund for $10,000? No. The way that they'll handle this is because you only owe the school $30,000 in total. They're gonna say, Oh, need-based scholarship, let us send you back your $10,000. So that's what they do. They send them back $10,000. So now your new need is, you guessed it, $0. Or they will adjust the merit-based scholarship amount and say, Okay, since you have a surplus of $10,000, we're going to lower your merit-based scholarship to $5,000. And then they're gonna say, oh, you have a surplus now 
of $5,000. What they're gonna do is send that money back to your need-based scholarship so that they don't have to pay you that because that is no longer a part of your need. Your new need-based scholarship is going to be $20,000. They're gonna send them that money back. So now your new need is zero dollars. So the goal of the financial aid office is to make sure that you cover your need. Not necessarily that you get all of your money that you earn through scholarship. We know that our cost of attendance was $50,000. Okay, your school fees are $30,000. Okay, so these numbers don't match up, right? What happens with the $20,000? Well, let's figure that out now. So let's say we accept our $5,000 Pell Grant. So now we no longer owe the school $5,000. Okay, so let's say we accept Pell Grant. We could accept the loan, but let's say that we don't. Go ahead and apply our merit-based scholarship. Let's go back to our original amount of $10,000. Let's say we go ahead and apply our need-based scholarship of $25,000. Again, we're going back to the original amounts. So for our fees, we see that we have a surplus of $10,000. So we see that we still have money of $10,000 here that we need. It's our need. So what's gonna happen from this is the school is gonna say, hey, you have a surplus of $10,000 here. Let's take this and apply this to your account because you still have $10,000 worth of need. So they're gonna apply this. Okay, so with this great news, we see that we don't owe the school any money. In fact, we have a surplus of $10,000. <laughs> Let's say that housing fee is $8,000. So your new fee is gonna be $38,000 um, and your new surplus will be $2,000. So they're going to apply $2,000 to your account and um, you'll still have an unmet need of $8,000. Now you may not actually need this money, but they put it in there just in case. So hopefully all of this makes sense. Um, that's how the financial aid office looks at your money, processes your money. Um, whenever you send the money, it's the same thing. So say that this last amount that we added here for $10,000 was the amount that you sent them in a check. Now, if you send that to them in a check, then they're just going to send you the money back because you don't need that. So they're, they're probably going to be like, you know, They'll just send it back to you or tell you that, you know, we don't need your money. Um, they won't adjust the other scholarships because this is money that you actually put in yourself. When it's money you put in yourself, they just send it back if you pay too much. Like this video, then share it with someone who's in school, someone who's thinking about going to school, just so they can get an idea about how the financial aid office is going to process their money. And then I want you guys to comment down below some ideas about videos that you want to see, um, things that you like. I hope to see you guys soon on the next video. See ya.